right watch. This is a follow-up video to my interview with Lollyfield and Love. I'll put a link in the description to that interview. It was quite interesting, about an hour and a half. And during that, I tried to speak about Discordianism, but I wasn't fully prepared to get into it properly, I realized later listening to it. I touched on it, but I didn't get into some of the most important aspects. And that's probably because I didn't look at it since, um, I don't know, years ago when I was doing uh, deep research into the JFK assassination because the Discordians come up in that research and um, I'll be explaining that um, right now. So I'm just doing this off the top of my head. So hopefully I can get through all this. It's quite complicated and um, it's quite abridged as well. I'm trying to cover a lot of things here. Uh, but essentially the idea is that there was a link between Discordians, Discordianism, and the um, Scientologists and the offshoot called the Process Church, which was satanic. So this all links in with serial killers that we were discussing in the interview. So in short, um, there's a person named Kerry Thornley, and he was Oswald's friend in the uh, Marines in the 1960s. And um, he was um, fascinated with Oswald and writing a book about him before Oswald was anybody. So that's pretty interesting. He is an ex-Mormon and um, John Birch Society member. So that's important with uh, the John Birch Society relations to the JFK assassination. There are many, many of the suspected uh, assassins or people linked to it were uh, John, John Birch Society members and the John Birch Society comes out of the Mormon church. Also very important to know. And the John Birch Society was the ones who made the JFK wanted for treason ad uh, when JFK was coming to town. And so they were looked into because of that ad. And um, there are some very interesting people in the uh, alternative media who have direct links to the John Birch Society at that time. One of them is the Texas Whale, Alistair Crowley Jones. Uh, his mother worked in the John Birch Society offices at the time that that poster was being printed up and pasted up all over Dallas, which was considered a threat to the president. And then he got killed. So of course they were inter, uh, interviewed and um, implicated, but they also had uh, direct links to um, COINTELPRO. They were written up in the COINTELPRO documentation that they were working with the FBI as part of the COINTELPRO. And speaking of which, um, Guy Bannister, who was sharing an office with Oswald, um, he was the um, ex-head uh, of the FBI in Chicago, and he was a COINTELPRO operative. And that's what him and Oswald were doing at the university, uh, asking people questions about communism, because they were on a mission to um, gather information about um, communists on campus. Uh, this is what people don't, don't understand, is Oswald was far, far right wing. That's why he was in the Marines. There are no left-wing communists in the Marines. It's um, absolutely uh, ridiculous to consider such a thing. And, um, and of course, uh, they were all working with uh, David Ferry as well. And um, David Ferry and, and Guy Bannister were working to uh, provide arms for the CIA operation. So you have CIA running around all over this, this thing. Now, how this links to... Um, um, back to Kerry Thornley, is that he's in the Marines with Oswald, then he comes out and he moves to New Orleans. And Kerry Thornley, during the um, investigations into the JFK assassination, he's called in by um, Jim Garrison and interviewed at, at least twice. And in the second interview, he admitted to perjuring himself in the first interview and he admitted that he was the one who came and picked up the F Fair Play for Cuba Committee printouts that Oswald ordered. And they were ordered, uh, these leaflets were ordered on a CIA account and printed out on that account or paid for by that account for Oswald 
to hand out on the street. And it was Carrie Thornley who picked them up from the printer. So you have quite this connection between um, COINTELPRO, the CIA, and um, Carrie Thornley. Now, Carrie Thornley claims he doesn't really know much about what was going on with the JFK assassination. Some people seem to indicate that he might be um, a double, one of the doubles of Oswald. He might have been being set up and used. He has discussed this. I've listened to interviews. He's now uh, passed away, but he's done a bunch of interviews about it. And um, he's very wishy-washy about um, these things. And he was almost um, charged by Jim Garrison for being a co-conspirator in uh, the assassination. So that's kind of how important he is. But the other side of him was he created um, Discordianism, this strange religion which was considered a joke. Uh, he created it with another person. So he's a co-founder of Discordianism, along with Greg Hill. But the most influential writer of their precepts was somebody named Robert Anton Wilson. And if you look into him, you'll find he um, admires Aleister Crowley. He's an occultist, a mystic, uh, into Buddhism, yoga. He's into all those New Age stuff which is all linked to um, the occult and Satanism. He's, as far as I'm concerned, he's a full-on Satanist. And um, what's interesting about him is he wrote the introduction to the book Sex and Rockets about Jack Parsons. Now, I bought that book, and I was reading that book, and I was thinking, this is quite interesting. There's some great information in here, but I had this feeling it was a bit of a whitewash and um, I believe it was because this guy's a full-on occultist linked to all these people that are high-level occultists. And he's writing the foreword exposing Jack Parsons. And for those who don't know, Jack Parsons was a famous uh, rocket scientist who um, created um, solid rocket fuel. It was part of the reasons um, we were able to uh, supposedly go to the moon, which I don't believe we did, as an aside. For people who wonder what I think about that, I, I just don't think there was the technology whatsoever to do that. It's a whole other ball game, but um, solid rocket fuel was extremely important for all kinds of um, rocket weaponry and stuff. And the other thing about Jack Parsons is he was a high-level occultist. He was the American representative for Aleister Crowley's OTO, and so he was the top occultist in um, America and in direct communication with the king, Aleister Crowley. And um, he was out um, doing all kinds of um, ceremonies and things, trying to do black magic in the desert while he was making rockets and stuff as well. And um, his uh, sidekick, his scribe at the time, was uh, L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. So um, working with him in his, with his black magic, Satanism, um, and that's a whole other deep subject you could get into, but you have L. Ron Hubbard doing that. And then later he creates Scientology, and um, he's um, a, a Navy, uh, ex-Navy person. And I just discovered um, something yesterday when I was doing refreshing my research on this. Something I'd always suspected is that L. Ron Hubbard was a... Um, an intelligence agent um, of, from the Navy, which is the Office of Naval Intelligence, the ONI, which was deeply, deeply involved in the JFK assassination, as an aside. Um, so you have all these links, and I always thought that Scientology was a, a naval intelligence operation from start to finish, but that's just an opinion. I have no real proof of it. But how this all connects to... Um, the process church is that 